Yeah. yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. And you move offices, you move offices and that sort of thing happens to you. So, listen... I am holding a piece of paper that you'll see me reading from uh, from time to time. <laughs> Good morning. This is a fresh new session at what I like to call Jams Drupal Camp. I am with a great open source friend of mine who I have the pleasure of running into a few times a year at various places around the world. Lorna Jane, for those who you want, the Jane is optional apparently. Lorna Mitchell. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I am very well, thank you. Cool. So this Jams Drupal Camp thing is, on the one hand, part of the Acquia podcast, and on the other hand, it is an idea that I had. There is um, certainly in the Drupal world, um, to uh, of which you are now tangentially a part, Lorna. Uh, you've been you've been adopted, whether you knew it or not. Um, in the Drupal world, there's a certain amount of problem. The, a lot of stuff that members in our community do is rather ephemeral. Uh, someone does a session at a Drupal camp, maybe it's not recorded, or maybe it's recorded, but after a year, the site is no longer online. So a lot of our very smart friends are giving us great information, and it's hard to find it sometime. So when I notice a session that I think is very interesting, I'll invite a person to come along here to Jam's Drupal camp on a live hangout to give that session, we'll have a bit of a conversation, and then that session will live on and um, hopefully be a little easier to find. I also then take those sessions, um, try to tag them right, try and promote them a bit so that, um, you know, we add more open to the open source. Right, and today we'll run, Laura and I are gonna talk for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to hand over and she will present her slide about all the new exciting things going on in PHP itself right now. You've been on the podcast before, but let's get a quick, you know, background check on you. When did you uh, first discover open source? I was actually still at university when I got into open source in general and PHP for the first time. Um, and it was one of those stupid things where I met a guy who was doing a website for one of the university societies, and he was doing a genuinely bad job. And so I told him that I could do a better job without any web development experience. So, hello, open source, show me what to do. Um, and I met a guy who kind of showed me what to do. And um, yeah, I did some other things after I graduated. My degree is actually in electronic engineering. But it was, it was at university doing stuff with no money, um, just looking around on the, on the internet for what was out there. Um, and how to make something. And so that was my introduction to open source. Obviously, I'm a few years away from that now, so uh, I've been doing it a while. So in fact, I, you see this a lot in our various communities. The, the combination of no money but a great idea, I think in, for past generations, it, there, a lot of great ideas have pretty much just disappeared. And we have this incredible chance now with um, open source software in general, PHP maybe especially, that someone with a great idea, someone uh, with the strength of conviction like you, who's just like, well, I'm a smart person, I can definitely do that better than you, can actually step in and show the world new things and better things. Um, Let's talk a little bit. So you got into, P you got into um, PHP, through that web experience. What made you stick with PHP? It just kept on coming up. It isn't what I did first. I graduated from university, um, and I wrote games for a while, and then I did uh, personnel software for a while, looking at doing a lot of reporting for HR departments. Um, however, that made me almost an Oracle DBA, and that's a pretty unusual combination. So. Um, I moved cities and there was a job which needed PHP and Oracle, 
And at that time, it was something that didn't go together particularly. So my hobby open source experience landed me um, that new job. And I have been doing PHP ever since. Uh, talk about the, 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 the contrasts between being a developer in the proprietary software world and the open source software world. Oh my gosh, they are worlds apart. And I am sure there are people doing good work in the proprietary world. But I find open source and also not just open source projects, but companies who work in that open source technology space make much better use of tools. If you're going to run an open source project, you have to be able to collaborate. You have to be able to deal with remote people. Everything has to be quite accountable and tracked because you're working across this crazy separation of time zones and cultures and languages and different long weekends and different relationships. Lots of these people haven't met in person. Um, and it carries over. So even the most basic creative agencies that I meet are all using Git. They're all using some kind of real time chat that's logged. They're all using issue trackers. In the proprietary software world, people still rename directories their initials when they're working on it. Really? <laughs> I still see that. So I am sure that there are people doing great work in proprietary software, but I think because open source kind of you can't walk to somebody's desk or, or re, you know, everybody doesn't work the same hours. Um, I, I think we make better use of tools and they're wonderful, free and well supported tools, of course. Right. And I suppose hand in hand with that, the open source software tools are actually very Darwinian. If we try something out and it does maybe 60% of what we need, there's a chance that we're going to go in and uh, improve it and make it exactly the tool that everybody needs. But there's also a chance that we're just going to drop it and find the tool that already does 75% of what we need. And because it's open source, we then have that power to, um, to make it the best solution possible. And the, the better it looks, the more people are going to come in and improve it. So if you have three or four solutions floating around for a common problem, one might then sort of shoot out and become the de facto standard. Uh, yeah, and, and a really good example is Git, because it's not the only distributed version control system um, on the planet. It might not even be the best one. But it's the one that we have now adopted. It has critical mass. And Git, Git itself has evolved in the last sort of two, three years enormously. If you use Git 2.0, it's all over the place. Every time you do something, it says, oh, hey, you might want to type this. And you know, like you haven't added this change, but you can. You should type Git add now. And it certainly never did that originally, because it was aimed for kernel developers. Now we're all using it. It's gotten a bit more humane. There's this, uh, you know, so-called renaissance of PHP going on. Can you talk about uh, what the renaissance of PHP looks like from your perspective? Oh, yes, absolutely. PHP is such a funny language. Um, I think as software developers universally, we love to hate it. Um, and lots of people go off and use other technologies and say how cool these other technologies are. Um, PHP has all been around. Uh, we're 20 years old next year. Um, it runs 80% of the web or more, depending which which numbers you read. So there might be more noise or hype about other technologies, but basically PHP is solid, dependable, runs on every platform, and it's always been around. It's really taken a a big jump forward since. Um, just in the last few years, really, we're seeing more regular releases of the PHP. We're seeing PHP communities collaborating on standards. Um, our frameworks used to be as apart and at war as different technologies were um, between different, like between sort of PHP versus Rails versus Python versus whatever. Our frameworks used to be like that, and now they're all interchangeable. They play nicely together. We're using the PSR standards, um, so PHP standards recommendations, PSR. 
we've agreed how these things should work. We've agreed how we're going to name our classes, which means that for those of us in user land, that's me and you, then we can choose the best of everything. And it's back to this Darwinian selection. We have Composer, and I can use the date time um, class that from straight PHP. I can use some multilingual support from Easy Components. I can pull in the Twig templating stuff from Symfony and use the best of it in conjunction with Zend PDF. So that has suddenly opened up. We're only building it once. We're not. Everybody doesn't have their own implementation of a wrapper for how to do dates and times. We just have one, and it's great. Um, and I think that kind of together collaboration has, has made PHP stronger and has made us collaborate on using standard tools within the industry and really cross-pollinating way more than being in, in this camp or in this camp in terms of what you do with your frameworks. Yeah, so I call that trend uh, open sourcing our open source projects. Uh, more, <laughs> yeah. more and more, we're able to choose the best implementation of some solution and then just rely on it to be good or, or of course, make it better ourselves. But that's pretty much done. And then we can focus on innovating. We can focus on building a business. We can focus on changing the world, helping other people, whatever we're actually interested in. Um, and, and it's incredibly exciting. And I think the other, the, the physical manifestation of this trend is in what I've decided to call um, a meta project. So I think Drupal is now somewhere between being its own thing. Oh, well, I'm talking about Drupal 8, of course. But, you know, Drupal is getting to a place where it's somewhere between being its completely own implementation of PHP and strange and weird and you know, now it's adopted a bunch of Symfony components and it's brought in the Twig templating engine and it's brought in a lot more external technologies and thrown them into the mix. And all of a sudden, um, I there's an argument to be made where it's a little bit hard to say what is Drupal and what is other, but it still ends up building this very powerful, very useful system. So how do you feel, like, what's your perspective on the meta project idea and perhaps um, specifically Drupal 8? So I haven't had a lot of experience with Drupal 8, but I think all of our projects are going to look like this. Everything is going to be not what did you make, but maybe like what's it made of and what does it do? So if you're building um, an API backend for something or just a website for your um, your local group or your project, you'll just pull together a couple of tools and that's getting easier and easier. Drupal 8 is a really, I like it. I think it's going to make this idea very approachable for everybody. Drupal has always been about here, use these tools and there's some quick start and then there's some stuff that you can plug in and if necessary you can take that way off to the other extreme and actually like write your own modules. Um, and Drupal 8 really builds on that idea. So we have PHP, that's an open source project, and you build it, people write extensions, people write the language. Then we have libraries that are built on PHP. So um, people build the date time functionality, the logging functionality, the routing functionality, Twig, and that's all pretty low level. And then people build, bring together those ideas and make something either that is the finished product or something like Drupal, which is intended to have an interface for exactly as you say, for you to build the thing that you actually care about. So it's 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 adding extra layers. I like to build with just a couple of layers, but that's because of my however many years of experience in PHP. For someone who just wants to get website out for their new company, then the extra layers are exactly what they need. And that's what Drupal does, both for small sites and for really quite big ones. Yeah, that's um something I call Drupal's fundamental design decision. And I think it's, if you strip away everything else, and there are a lot of interesting conversations to be had, but I contend that if you strip away everything else, Drupal's fundamental design decision is empowerment. The idea that right from the beginning, we've been building as much flexibility, extensibility, as much power as possible into the user interface, right? So that 
non-coders can get a very, very, very long way and have something useful and powerful and maybe even beautiful to so and Drupal 8 is continuing this and and so I say um, I, I would say that Drupal 8 is something like an a, uh, a user interface for building APIs for building web services for building for building digital businesses and I really find that exciting it's very very possible to make something more efficient uh, or, or more specialized or what have you and if you are able to code right you can get something um, <clears throat> designed to do a specific whatever it is very very well and very very cleanly uh, Drupal is a little bit more as opposed to that minimalism Drupal is kind of more maximalist and comes with a bit more stuff stuck together but that extra stuff empowers an awful lot of people. So that's that's one of the things that gets me the most excited about, about uh, the Drupal project specifically. So, but Drupal's empowerment is very, very firmly based on being a PHP project. And another one of the things that we're striving for in Drupal is to come really come back home and be part of the broader PHP world and be part of the exciting collaboration that's going on so that uh, not only can we take advantage of the latest innovation, but also um, contribute to uh, what's going on. You know, there's a lot of really, really smart people in Drupal with great ideas, and those ideas have been broadly adopted in our little corner of the world, but I think now that uh, now that uh, Drupal is Drupal 8 is running uh, five point, PHP 5.4 and we're using object oriented coding and all of that, I think our Drupal smart people are going to be able to have a lot more influence uh, in the broader context and I'm pretty excited about that. I think so and I think this work, works both ways. I think this works, you know, Drupal has famously had its attitude of we're gonna get off our island um, but also I think there's way more scope for people from other islands to come visit you. And I'm quite enjoying seeing that happen. And like you say, I've been adopted by the Drupal community. I still don't know any Drupal. And it doesn't matter because there's lots of people there to share ideas with. Um, I'm giving not one but two PHP talks at DrupalCon Amsterdam. Um, it's something which I see cross-pollinating really well. And also as Drupal kind of modernizes, comes back into um, the world where PHP and the other core kind of tool and framework developers are, they can, yes, contribute, but also understand what's happening there and maybe influence that, be part of what's actually useful to people who make tools like Drupal um, and what isn't. So I think it's exciting times. Yes, I, I, I couldn't agree more on that. So, and why I brought you here today is to tell us about the new developments, what's going on in PHP right now, what are, what's going on in the current versions, what's in the upcoming versions, and you've brought up some slides with you. Yes, if you're li for the audience, if you're listening to the podcast, what's going to happen now is we're going to cut off. And you, I really, really highly recommend, if you're interested, to come and see Lorna's session. And so come to acquia.com slash podcasts or acquia.com. Uh, there's a page called Jams Drupal Camp. I think the URL would be J-A-M-S uh, hyphen Drupal hyphen camp. There's a landing page there for that too. Come and find the page. There is going to be a post. There's going to be Lorna's uh, session a video embedded there. Lorna's slides will also be embedded there. And as much linky goodness as we can pack in to that page. So for the podcast, Lorna, thank you so much for taking the time to do this and come and talk with me today. So thank you. Now we're going to cut over and podcast done. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Drupal, for being amazing. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing the community at some more of us. All right. So yes, thank you, Drupal, for being amazing. That's uh, a great way to uh, get on our good side. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you.